This is the Negev Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. If you dig here, you'd expect to find dust, rocks, maybe a scorpion. You wouldn't expect to find this one million fish. Barramundi, tilapia, sea bass, tropical species that naturally belong in the rivers of Australia or the lakes of Africa, thriving in the middle of a barren wasteland. Israel didn't just stumble upon these fish, they engineered them into the desert. They drilled 700 meters through the Earth's crust to tap a hidden ancient aquifer. They built a river where none existed. Then they did something even more extraordinary. They took the dirty, nutrient-rich water from the fish tanks and used it to fertilize crops. The result? Not disaster. It was an agricultural miracle. Welcome back to Grand Structures. Today we explore the world's most unlikely farm, how Israel turned a desert into an aquarium, and how one million fish are saving the future of food. To grow fish in a desert, the first challenge is water. In the Negev, water is a time traveler. Deep beneath the sand, around 700 meters down, lies the Nubian sandstone aquifer. This is fossil water, trapped hundreds of thousands of years ago when the desert was, you know, a tropical savanna, sitting in darkness under immense pressure. In the 1970s, geologist Professor Hai Isar convinced the government to drill. When they reached the aquifer, the water shot to the surface. But there were two problems. First, temperature geothermal heat keeps the water at 37 to 40 degrees Celsius, like a hot bath. Second, salinity. The water is brackish, about one-tenth the salinity of seawater. Too salty to drink and lethal to most crops. Most would have capped the well and honestly, just walked away. Israeli scientists asked a different question. If we can't drink it, what can live in it? The answer came from thousands of miles away, in the tropical rivers of Australia and Africa. Enter the Barramundi, a prized tropical fish from the Indo-Pacific. It thrives in warm water, and in the Negev, the water is perfectly warm year-round. The mild salinity actually helps the fish, reducing parasites and keeping their skin healthy. Farms like Kibbutz Mashab Sad and Aquatech Fisheries built massive tank systems. Ancient hot water is pumped directly into these ponds, creating a giant industrial-scale aquarium teeming with millions of fish. But keeping the fish alive is only half the challenge. The real problem is their waste. Fish excrete ammonia and nitrogen, which, you know, quickly builds up in closed tanks. Without treatment, the ammonia can actually burn the gills and kill the fish in just a few hours. Traditional aquaculture relies on expensive filters or, well, dumping the water into the ocean, a solution that's just impossible in the desert. In the Negev, water is gold, and every single drop must be reused. This is where the Israeli engineers had their eureka moment. They looked at the dirty, ammonia-rich, salty water and thought, that's not waste, it's fertilizer. This is the double usage system, the economic secret weapon of the Negev. Water is pumped from the deep well into the fish ponds. The fish thrive in the heat and produce waste rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. This nutrient-packed water now cooler, flows directly into the irrigation pipes of nearby olive groves and date farms. The results were honestly astonishing. Crops irrigated with fish water grew faster and yielded more than those with fresh water or chemical fertilizers. Why? Well, because the fish waste is organic, releasing nutrients slowly, the perfect plant food. The soil acts as a natural filter, cleaning the water as it seeps back into the ground. The fish feed the trees, and the trees clean the earth. And the salt? Olive trees and date palms are tough. They thrive in brackish water. 
In fact, mild salt stress often makes their fruit sweeter, just like desert tomatoes. It's a perfect symbiotic cycle. But the real genius isn't just biology, it's economics. Fresh water in Israel costs over 60 cents per cubic meter, which is just too expensive for low-margin fish farming. Brackish water, almost free, is unwanted by others. By using the water twice, once for fish, once for crops, the costs are shared. Cheap water for fish, free fertilizer for trees, and shared energy costs for pumping. Suddenly, desert farming becomes profitable. Today, Israel exports these desert-grown fish to Europe. Just think about the irony for a second, a country that's mostly desert selling fish to nations surrounded by water. This desert river isn't just water, it's a river of ingenuity. Israel took a resource that was too hot, too salty, too deep, and unlocked its potential through a precise biological chain. In a world running out of resources, waste is just a lack of imagination. One million fish swimming in the sand isn't a miracle, it's a blueprint for feeding a hotter, drier planet.